On this edition of Awaken the Wonder, my guest is my dad and he's in the studio today. He went all the way to the state of California to pursue a life of drugs, but God radically encountered his life. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Awaken the Wonder. I'm so excited to greet and introduce you to my dad today. He's an amazing man of God who encountered the Lord in powerful ways. Uh, he pursued a life of drugs and alcohol and all types of things. You'll hear about that in just a moment. Before we do though, I want to tell you about some exciting things uh, that are coming up all around the world. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a minute. This next miracle you're going to see is a woman from the nation of Brazil who had a radical miracle take place where she was actually colorblind. She was in her late 60s and uh, early 70s and had an amazing encounter with the Lord where the Lord actually gave her back her sight. Check out this miracle from Brazil. Evangelist Caleb Wampler here coming to you from Brazil where we have had incredible miracles take place this week. This is part of our miracle series and I know this is gonna bless you. This week we were ministering and a woman that had been colorblind actually received a powerful miracle this week. In the service, she was seeing complete darkness. And when we asked about it, it had been going on for decades. That's right, decades. Can you imagine seeing in black and white for decades? She couldn't see any color around and she had come forward to the altar uh, many, many times over these decades to have the pastors pray for her, guest missionaries, guest evangelists. And no matter what she did, she couldn't be healed and couldn't receive her color. Uh, her eyes were a little bit shaded as well, so it just made it even worse. Well, in the service, she received a powerful miracle. We started calling out for different things to take place, and I had a prophetic word of knowledge about uh, eyes being healed. Well, in that moment, she had heat come into her eyes, and her, they felt really warm, and she opened her eyes in the moment just like this, and she realized that she could actually see in color. She saw blues and oranges and reds and yellows, and it was absolutely amazing. She came forward to testify, and it was such an exciting response because she was able to demonstrate her healing right there on the platform. God had touched her powerfully. I mean, can you imagine, my friends, not ever seeing in color, not seeing any anything, any oranges and yellows and blues and whites and, and reds. I mean, it, it, to, to be completely in darkness that long, it didn't matter how bright it was in the day, how dark it was in the night, she would always see in black and white. But God's mercy touched her, and may he touch you in Jesus' name. I bless you here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. You know, I just love how God moves powerfully in, in the nations. It's incredible. Jesus is the miracle worker. And today we're going to pray for you to receive a miracle as well. The Lord is going to touch you powerfully. We're just praying that right on the other side of that TV, that phone, no matter where in the world you're watching from, that the Lord would powerfully encounter your life. He's going to touch you. I pray that today he's going to shake you from your normal and give you an encounter today in Jesus' name. Uh, that is what he does. It is in his nature, and it's amazing to see what he's doing. I just want to, before we jump into this next segment, just remind you to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Go to Evangelist Caleb Wampler, and you can click the little subscribe button, turn on the bell notification. Also, this is on the Awaken the Wonder podcast as well. Uh, you can just go wherever you listen to podcasts and go on there, type in Awaken the Wonder or type in Caleb Wampler, and you'll see it pop right up. Go ahead and give it a, a rating on there as well. And uh, we'd really appreciate that. It would really help us to get the word out to even more people about what the Lord is doing in the nations and what he can do in your life as well. Now, today, I'm excited to introduce my guest, William Wampler. Uh, if you recognize the last name Wampler, it's because it is my dad and he is here in the studio today. And so it's really exciting today to welcome my dad to the program, William Wampler. Hey, great to be here. What a joy. I am loving this. Yeah, it, it's cool because... You know, back when we used to talk about ministering together, I was a kid, you talk about ministry, talk about going into, into the world, seeing people come to Jesus. Uh, you know, I never thought I'd actually be sitting on a TV set with you, 
getting to actually interview my own dad yes. and getting to like rise and say, you are blessed, dad. That's what and I am says. blessed. You always want your kids to excel and exceed anything you do. And you have done that. Your mom and I are so proud of you. And like the father looked at Jesus and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I get to say that about you. Come on, man. Well, thank so you. It's I, fantastic. It means the world to me, honestly. Um, now today, people are tuning in from all around the world uh, in, in countries literally across the globe. And uh, I want to tell your, uh, have you tell your story about how you came to Christ because uh, really it, it's quite the story. Um, it's quite the journey. You didn't grow up in a Christian home uh, at all. And um, there was certainly religious components to your upbringing. But, um, but you eventually encountered the Lord, came to Him, fell back out of that lifestyle, and then decided to run to the state of California to pursue a life of drugs and alcohol and everything else you ever thought was your dream. And uh, I want to just, I want to take you back to that moment. How did you first come to the Lord? And then we'll start the journey there. Yeah, well, it's a, I'm, I'm just a typical person who was raised in America. My dad was in the military and um, we, I was actually born in Washington State in the 60s. And uh, then in California, he went to Vietnam and we ended up back in the Midwest where his, my mom and his family. Yeah, so we landed back when I was in second grade in Offutt. Uh, Air Force Base, which was close to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where all their family was. That was, and we were there for 12 years until I graduated. Um, you know, I was never abused as a child physically, but my parents had some extreme difficulties. I was not raised in a Christian home. We went to Catholic church, and I, you know, didn't mean anything to me. Nothing, I'm not saying anything against that. I know some really good, powerful Catholics that love the Lord. So the commentary is about the mercy and the goodness of God. I was completely lost. I was just playing sports, playing with my friends, had really nothing going on at home. I had no real love experience with love at all. My dad was basically gone all the time. And um, I was either up in my room. If I came in the house, I was up in my room all by myself. And my sister was in her room or I went outside to play. That's kind of how I was raised. I didn't know that wasn't necessarily normal. And God bless my mom. She's in heaven now. She met the Lord. Everything's awesome there. But uh, my parents eventually just could not get along, and they, they um, broke up through a divorce when I was 13. And the judge asked me, who do you want to live with? And I just picked my dad because it meant more freedom, and meant I got to go do whatever I want. That's where I started going down. Um, there was, back in then, I mean, I learned to smoke and drink from the stuff that was in my own house. There was just alcohol there and cigarettes there. I would just go to the refrigerator and grab cigarettes. From my parents. I mean, it was just, they weren't letting me. They didn't want me to. I started smoking when I was 10 years old. Wow. And I just grabbed the cigarettes out of the fridge, and that was, they were my supplier. And um, so I just learned a typical worldly lifestyle and partying and rock and roll and drugs. And um, when my parents split up, I just went deeper into that. I did not like to drink, and I did not like the whole alcohol thing, but then I discovered smoking pot, marijuana. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is the most amazing thing. I don't have to go through the drinking process, but I can be high. And that was not a good thing for me because I went way, I mean, I woke up and reached for a cigarette and reached for a joint to get high. Now, this is while you're a teenager, right? This is when I'm 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. Wow. That was how I was living. Now, maybe those that are watching around the world right now, you're like in that same spot where you're like, you're younger. You're trying to figure it out. You can just do whatever you want. Your parents aren't paying attention. Stay tuned to this story, man. This is incredible. Uh, how, how did God meet you in this? Yeah, and so um, the Lord's love is everlasting. I'm so, I mean, wherever you are in life, you can know the Lord it loves you. He's thinking about you as like the grains of the sand on the beach. His thoughts never stop about you. And he's always thinking about you, reaching for you. So I got set up one summer in 1979 by the Holy Spirit. I went to visit my cousins in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I didn't have a license. I couldn't drive. But I went out there just to visit one of my cousins in particular, who was like five or six years older than me. And he was way out there, and I thought that was cool. He was like, he would always kind of show up at the family gatherings, and I'd go, what is he about? And then he'd drift back out. And his name was Danny. And... I thought, I'm going to go there now. I'm a partier. I'm, I'm going to do all this partying, and I'm going to go meet one of my cousins, and we're going to. Well, I got out there, and I was staying at my cousin's house, so I couldn't leave. He had changed, and he was, like, different. He looked different. He was always there. That 
particular house was where everybody hung out and there was like pool tables there and ping pong and pinball machines and all this stuff. So everybody liked to be there. One night they had a meeting at their house. It was called FCA, Fellowship for Christian Athletes. And he goes, hey, do you want to come with us? And I was like, no. And I, I had drugs in my suitcase and I was ready to party with him. And he's like trying to invite me to a Christian athletic meeting. I had no idea what he was talking about. And they went in the backyard and there was like 35 of them singing and praising. And I was like, ah, okay, this isn't what I was hoping to show up for. My other cousin who was my age. Um, after the meeting was over, it was about nine o'clock in the evening, which is a key part of the story. Well, people kind of hanging out. Well, then my, one of my cousins, Tracy, who I love with all my heart, and um, she, she started talking to me about the things of God. And I was like, wow. just deflecting um, the questions. Oh, where did the dinosaurs come from? And I was, just, I was just subjecting. Well, my other cousin, Danny, heard it and some of his friends. Next thing I know, I'm sitting at a living room table. I can't leave for four and a half hours wow. by myself with like five Christians. <laughs> And they were like, they were loving and they were responding to all my questions and objections. And I just kept at it. What a like, surprise, though. A, a suitcase full of drugs yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah. And so I was only supposed to be there for a week. But after about four and a half hours, we didn't seem like we were getting anywhere. And I was being stubborn. Now, I'm 14 years old, basically right before my 15th birthday. And they said, Let's just, why don't we just pray? And I said, it's 1.40 in the morning. I remember the time. I go, I don't, I don't know how to pray. I don't even know, you know, whatever. So they just started praying. Now, I've done a lot of drugs, and I've experienced stuff. I felt something come into the room. Now, the only way I know how to describe it, it was like, it was like a, on the ceiling or something in the living room, this energy. But it was this energy of peace. It was this energy of joy. And I, I was just had my head bowed, and they were praying, and I felt, now I know it was the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the presence of God. It was the glory of God. And they said, Willie, why don't you pray? And I said, I don't know how to pray. Now, this is my salvation prayer, because God, there's no formula. I've used the Romans Road many times. You know, confess Christ, confess the resurrection, believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth. I know all the verses now. Back then, I didn't know verses, but the Lord knew my heart. He, I said, Lord, I said, God, if this is you, I want it. And I felt like a rush, like a funnel. All this energy I felt in the ceiling, I just went whoosh, right down inside of me. It was phenomenal. And I almost don't remember anything else that happened that night. But I remember the next morning. I woke up and I was sleeping in the basement at their home. My eyes popped open and that I felt this full presence was like still in me. I came bursting out of the room. I said, something happened to me. I'm changed. I don't know what's going on. And I started asking my cousins questions. They started saying, you need to read the word. If you want wisdom, read the Proverbs. I've been reading the book of Proverbs for 41 years. Like wow. That's part of my devotions just because of that day, Proverbs a day. And I read the whole book of Proverbs. I said, now what? <laughs> you know, and then what's funny is I asked my dad because he had custody then, custody custody of me then and I said dad can I stay something happened to me and I stayed there for three weeks wow and I ran around with my cousins to Bible studies I got baptized in a pool we played basketball we hung out <laughs> we taught we prayed we just had fun and my whole life was transformed in those three weeks before I went back come on man. that's incredible and you know today you're gonna have that opportunity to pray uh, the prayer that he prayed or, or whatever it is, I'm going to have him lead you at the end of this into the arms of Jesus. And my friends, he can do that for you today. That energy, uh, you know, I hear today the good vibes, those good feelings, those good things, man, that, that, that all is like whatever it is. But the Holy Spirit is powerful. He wants to come in. He wants to rush through you like a mighty wind. And he wants to touch you today. And he's going to do that just like he did that day. Now, as, uh, as many of us know, life happens Struggles happen. There's a lot of hardships. There's a lot of things that come up. And sometimes we lose our way. Stuff happens. And so that wasn't just the end of the salvation story, right? What happened next? Oh, no, it was not the end at all. So I went back to Nebraska. I went to back to all my friends. All of them were partiers, long haired, rock and rollers. You know, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I went back and I didn't know anybody. So I was literally all by myself. 
And all I knew, okay, I went back to my friends, but I wasn't smoking or drinking or cussing or doing that anymore. I just was transformed. I remember one night they were trying to force me to get high because they were like, what happened to you? We don't know what's going on. And there was this big bodybuilder kid. This is in ninth grade. Like he came into the picks right, right before my um, 10th grade year. And he never said a word, but all of them were starting to gang up on me. It was late one Friday night. It was dark, like 11, 12 at night. Wow. And all of a sudden, he goes, leave him alone. And I was like, so glad he said that. I mean, I was like, I was like an angel of the Lord just showed up. And everybody kind of like never heard him talking. He was a big guy. And something about that, the Lord just put it in his heart to defend me. But the reason I tell that story is because I knew at that moment I wasn't the same. Wow. I couldn't just go back. And so I went to school that year, and I started preaching the gospel to people. I found a youth group in Bellevue. Uh, my first youth pastor was Jeannie Mayo. You may even yeah. have heard that name. I didn't know anything about the, the, the circles of Christianity. Yeah, the, the, um, the hunger book that we had come out, Jeannie Mayo is one of the endorsers of exactly. that book. And yeah. that was due to her, her relationship with you and how you had been connected to and, her. So. Yeah, and that was my first experience with like a youth group. And my whole 10th grade year, I was like going to church there and sharing wow. the gospel, learning about... I didn't know anything about the Bible. and um, But then I, I also understood over time that you know your personal devotional life your relationship has to be cultivated with the lord um, that particular school had one of the best theater departments in the state and if you could get in a musical or production uh, that was a big deal and so i landed a part as a dancer now here's the, the the hard part is i went had to go to rehearsals every night it took me out of my youth group it took me out of my normal routine I started getting cold in my heart. I didn't think I would, but I did. Because wow. I wasn't reading the Word anymore. I started listening to my old music. The next thing you know, I, w I had walked away from the Lord. Wow. And I did that, recommitted my life, and I did the same thing. I got, got a part again the next year. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And I walked away from the Lord at the end of my junior year. And I went off the deep end my senior year. When you walk away from the Lord, it gets intense. Wow. And I'm so glad the Lord was merciful. Because I remember one day the Holy Spirit was convicting me and I walked down to one of my friend's basement and I could tell the Holy Spirit was like, don't walk away from me, don't walk away. And I literally said out of my mouth, this is the mercy of God, I said, I said leave me alone. Wow. I am so terrified that I said that to this day. And he knew that my heart was really after him. I just had a lot of layers and layers and layers like the onion <laughs> of worldliness in me and I didn't have like yeah. any guidance wow. in that. Well, that story ended up, the night I did that, where I walked away from the Lord my junior year, I met the, a person who was in the military who got orders to California a year and a half later. And I had actually was roommates with him. He says, hey, I'm going to California. That's the providence of God, the sovereignty of God. The guy I met the night I backslid was the, reason, the way I got to California because I threw all my stuff in with him after I graduated high school which was a miracle in itself that I did that. Yeah. <laughs> it's another story. And then I went all the way to California, and that's and within... Um, now, you went out there to pursue a life of drugs. Yes. To party. I mean, I mean to be a drug lord. Yes. I mean, that's got pretty much your story, right? It's a crazy story, and just for the sake of time, I can only tell you, yeah. me and two of my friends had schemed a plan. We changed our names. I had a different name. Wow. We're going to go out there and we're going to deal drugs and just, you know, it was a crazy story. Um, one of my guys, I dropped, friends I dropped off on the highway on, uh, to, and he was going to meet us in California. I never saw him again. The guy I went out with when I got there a month and a half later, he got kicked out of the military and I haven't seen him either. Wow. And so the, once I got out there, um, I was in an apartment by myself in the middle of February, February 14th. 1983. I'll never forget it. Wow. I was in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. And I had pulled a box out. I kept a little memory box of some Christian stuff I had. And all of a sudden, something started happening. And as I looked at some of this stuff, I was like, oh my goodness. I started remembering the relationship I had with the Lord. And I laid on my bed after a while looking at it all. And all of a sudden, I felt a warfare just like the, on the ceiling, like the night I got saved. I could feel almost like the angel on the shoulder and the devil on the shoulder. It was kind of like that. I could feel the devil say, don't give your heart back to God. You'll, you're all by yourself. You'll have no friends. You're at, you'll never make it. 
And I could hear the Lord saying, come back to me. I will take care of you. Don't worry. And this warfare went on like in the bedroom ceiling of my apartment back and forth for probably 30 minutes. I could feel an intense warfare. And finally, I said, Lord, I'm going to surrender to you. And when I was 18 years old in uh, Yuba City, California is where that happened. And I surrendered my heart back to the Lord. And and. The Lord has taken me back since then. You know, I've been, I stayed faithful to him all that time. But he told me one day, I'm not going to allow you to go back and walk away from me anymore. Right. And so I didn't really feel anything that day. This is part of the crazy story. But I had driven by this church in Marysville. And so they're not even really close. But somehow I had landed at this church. So I, you said there somebody had given you like a business card to a pastor or something in a drug deal or something? Yeah, like. yeah. I mean, I, one <laughs> night I'm partying with a bunch of friends who were on LSD, doing acid. I barely knew these guys, and they were in my apartment. Well, we started talking about God one night, and I was like, well, I'm an expert in that. I, used to, I knew the Lord. What's your question? <laughs> and this guy says, oh, I went to this one church, and they were they were." dancing around and shouting and loving the Lord and worshiping. They were speaking in tongues. I said, yeah, that sounds like a good church. If you ever go to one, go. And he handed me a card. I never really thought about it. Wow. Well, that day that in the bedroom where I felt the warfare of the Spirit over me yeah. and I surrendered, I had that piece of literature about that church, and I actually drove to it. I don't even remember how I got there. Wow. It was in the middle of the day. It was a weekday, like 1 in the afternoon or 2. I walked in. I looked at some of the literature. I went into the sanctuary, and up to that point, it had been like a week. Wow. I hadn't felt the presence of God. I was concerned. I knew I'd given my heart back to him, but it was like dry. And I just went up to that altar, and when I got to that altar, I started bawling. The glory of God descended upon me, and I started weeping and weeping, and I was like, I felt the love of God, and I felt washed and transformed. I was like... I'm supposed to be here, and this pastor had come, Dave Baker. He's now pastoring in Vacaville, California. He'll never forget that day. He says, hi, I'm Dave Baker from Youth Pastor at New Life Assembly. And that's my home church. That's my spiritual home to this day. And um, I was there in California for 16 years. There's a whole other story. But once I got there, the Lord wanted me to be under that pastor and learn about the prophetic and revelation and evangelism and soul winning and hunger for dreaming, and the Holy wow. Spirit. And I met my wife there. You were born there. I mean, it was phenomenal how God took me all the way there from Nebraska. Now, I, I love it. I mean, obviously, I, I am redeemed because you were redeemed. You know, And like I am sitting here today doing what I do because you had that moment and that encounter. Um, I, I, I'm just so thankful for it, honestly. And I think because, you know, oftentimes we don't think about in those moments, how our choices are affecting generations to come. I now, uh, at the time of this recording, just had our fourth child come into the world, and all they're ever going to know is the love of Jesus, because that day you said everything is stopping, and everything's stopping with me. Um, It was obviously a journey, and we all continue to work out our salvation as the Lord does, but you put a stop to everything with drugs, alcoholism, uh, a life of, 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 of lust and all these things, put that stuff away. The Lord set you free. And, and now I am redeemed today because of it. My kids are going to grow up in a Christian loving home because yes, you made right. that decision. Hallelujah. Um, you obviously met my mom. And um, if you didn't see her episode, you can make sure to go see that. She talks about an encounter she had with the glory of God. So make sure you'll, you'll go there, look in the show notes, and you'll find the link to that as well. But um, I just want you to look into that camera right there, Dad, and talk to the person who's sitting there who, who, who needs to recommit their life to the Lord, too. Maybe they did at one point, but they just haven't been living like that. COVID-19 and the coronavirus, there's riots, there's all kinds of stuff going on in the world. And a lot of people um, are, are feeling like they've just lost their hope in this season. And maybe they used to feel God's presence. Maybe they used to feel like they were on fire for Him, but they lost their way. Can you look into that camera and lead somebody into the arms of Jesus? Yeah, and what's important to know is that the the love and the mercy of God is everlasting. And we think, oh, I failed, I did this and that. It's the enemy's job, the accuser, that's what he does. And you keep accusing yourself as falling in line with the enemy, falling in line with Satan, you can call him whatever you want. But his primary character and his name even means the accuser. So you think, well, I failed, I've made mistakes, I'm not worthy. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with me. 
from my story, you can see, and Caleb's story is completely different, and, and his mother's story was different if you heard that story. All the stories are different, but the, the love of God is the same. He is always reaching to humanity. You are never outside of his love. You are never outside of his compassion and mercy and him trying to reach you. So what I would challenge you to do is stop listening to your own heart. Stop listening to what the enemy is saying or your accusations of bringing up your past memories and go to the word of God. He says, I love you. I died for you. He, the cross is the, story, is the ultimate story of how much he loves you. It's the ultimate picture of how much he loves you. And he took me back, but I don't really think his hand was ever off me. There were many times I drove home after I had walked away from the Lord, and I don't remember driving home. I would check the front of my bumper and think, I wonder if I hit somebody with my car last night. And, but the Lord kept protecting me. He had his hand on me. I would walk outside of parties and look up to the sky, and I said, God, I know I shouldn't be doing this. I need you. And he, he knew my heart was really after him, but I didn't understand things like fellowship and the importance of the Word of God and the importance of worship and prayer and sharing my faith. And so I really understand now the church and the body of Christ and how much I need that because when I walked away from it and quit going, I thought I was strong enough, but I wasn't. See, it's not our strength that matters. It's the strength of the Lord. So no matter where you're at right now, no matter what country you're at, no matter what situation you're in, the Lord is there. He is present with you. You can just reach out by faith like I did that day in my apartment. I was all by myself. I got saved by a bunch, with a bunch of people the first time, but when I recommitted my life finally, I was by myself except the Lord was there. The Holy Spirit was there. And all I did was reach out and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I need the strength. And you know what? 41 years later, I'm still doing that. Every day is a new day. Get up. Reach out to the Lord and realize it's not your own strength. It's the blood of Christ that cleanses us. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to serve him and to love him. It takes God to love God. He's going to give you as a gift the love. The, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I don't know how to love. I got a whole nother story about that. We could do multiple shows on the love of God and how he's, the journey he's taken me. And so that's my challenge to you today is reach out to the love of God because he's right there. Amen. So just, just right where you are, just say, Jesus, come into my heart right now. Change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose up from the dead for me. Fill me with your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer today and you've been encouraged by the story of my dad, I just want to encourage you to write your testimonies in there. Info at kingdomencounters.us. You'll see the email on the screen there. You can go on to Evangelist Caleb Wampler on the Facebook page. Leave your testimonies there. I'm going to be coming to you soon with more interviews on the Awaken the Wonder podcast with my dad on prayer and dreams. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you next time.